day and welcome to the Investor Motivation Podcast. My name is Robert Gowdy and with me I have awesome Amy. Thank you. Awesome Amy. Awesome Amy. How are you Amy? Great. How are you? Good. Thank you. What are we doing today? Today we have a full day um, conference with Lonsec which is a very investment focused and we're looking at all the asset sectors, what they're doing, what they're projected to do. What the economy is doing and projected to do. Cool. <laughs> a uh, lot what, of people and, with opinions. And what are we missing out on on this <laughs> one? So we've we've jumped out because we're they're talking about alternatives. It's not a space that um, I personally are a big a big fan of. So we're talking about hedge funds and all the credit. Yeah, just debt, private debt. Yeah, it's, some of the stuff that's a bit left field, very specialised, and it's, it's probably with chosen not to be there for that one that we could our time is better served um providing some information uh on stuff that we are a little bit more passionate about Mm -hmm. um so let's kick off and what are we chatting about today well today we're going to just talk about last week we touched on valuations and what actually drives business valuations so now we're going to talk a little bit more about the current market as a whole how it's valued currently and yeah what we're doing with you know, client portfolios, are we investing because it is so highly valued right now? And, yep. and yeah, a little yep. bit of insight there. Yeah, and, and who determines, you know, are things overvalued or not at the moment? So we'll also touch on what we look at and the resources we use. And some of these are free on the internet that you can go and check out. Some of them are our paid resources, but uh, a lot of this information is out there freely. So you can go and, um, and then also talk about, you know, timing the market and how ridiculously difficult that is because in the short term no one knows yeah exactly. no one knows what's going to happen with the markets at any stage no. ever so just on from that this is general advice whatever we say don't you know take on board and do for the next six months because it's as you know what we think today and that might change tomorrow yeah fantastic yeah very good um acknowledgement of land sure thing. thank you on behalf of the investor motivation podcast we would like to pay our respects to the traditional owners of the land on which we do record this podcast and pay our respects to the elders past present and emerging fantastic thank you amy um so let's let's first perhaps talk about what we've seen in the market just of late um and obviously we'll we will talk about you know what we physically do for new clients at you know, people who have just sold a farm, you know, we're talking lots of money. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we look at the markets now and some of the areas that we look, we've, we've used a, a asset consultant called Tim Farrelly for probably the last 20, uh, no, we're not 20, but probably 17 years. Um, and he provides us 10 year forecasts. And we've spoken about Tim's work before and he provides us the tipping point tables. Yeah. So it's a 10 year forecast that is using dividends, earnings growth, and price to earnings ratios as three metrics to work out you know, what should be our expected return on average for the next 10 years. Yeah. He uses 10 years because he doesn't know what's going to happen in the short term, the same as everyone else. So, and based on that, we can look at US equities. Um, and so the expected return for the US market, US equities, at the moment is less than 2%. Yeah, so that's 2% on average for the next 10 years. 10 years. years. So you're taking on a lot of risk, a lot of volatility in the market to get less than 2%. And that is because of the run we've seen in the last, you know, 16 months. It's just been astronomical in that, especially the tech space and the NASDAQ space, which really drives that US equities market. And and Amy, you you got some really good stats on the S&P 500 and what they're calling the Magnificent Seven. Yeah. So what, what, does, what does the Magnificent Seven mean? Who are they? What do they do? Well, the Magnificent Seven are probably the most, you know, talked about and heard about um, stocks. So we've got, you know, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google. Meta. Meta, so Facebook, um, NVIDIA, Seven. Who am I missing? Um, who else could be there? I mentioned Meta. Yeah, we've got... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. One more in there. Yep. But those seven companies alone in the S&P 500, so the S&P 500 being the top 500, seven companies make up 20% of that market. Right. With their market cap. So it's just the performance of that those seven companies really drive 20% of the whole entire S&P 500, yeah. which is massive. And then the top two companies in the world, so Apple and Microsoft, actually make up 10% as well. So there's wow. so, 5% make up the other 10. So it's very concentrated. Very. And... So, and when we look at the NASDAQ, which is the really 
you know, tech only benchmark mm -hmm. in, on the US um, exchanges. Uh, that has returned 30% in the last 12 months. Uh, Google came out with an amazing report uh, last Thursday night after trading hours. The next day it spiked by 11%. It had a great result. Mm -hmm. Cloud um, storage revenues are going for the roof. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of great positive things there. And, and that's why the market is, is catching up on, on what's happened there. And that's why you get these big price jumps up. So Google or Alphabet has done, last time I look, I didn't see what it did last night, but around 57% uh, for the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. So we've had these really big jumps up and that's then reflected in Tim Farrelly's projections, his forecasts, to say, well, after after it's gone up, you should expect a lower future return. Yeah. When share markets crash, you should expect higher returns. Yeah. Now, the other area we look is um, Professor Robert Schiller's CAPE ratio. Again, we've spoken about this before. That is, so if you look up um, uh, Schiller CAPE ratio Barclays, you'll find a... a on the Barclays website, you can go and have a look at this valuation model yeah. that Professor Robert Chiller has made, and you can check out for your country. Yeah, so, very okay. clever. So, there's some of the, the, the things that we, we look for. Um, but we're not time, you know, talking about trying to time the market, we just don't want to go and buy at a peak. Because no. we just know people's results. You, know, you buy at a peak, there's going to be a correction at some stage. Yeah. And I think that's, you always hear that um, on all the superannuation providers, they'll always say, to you, you know, past performance is not an indicator of future performance. And I've always thought, you know, they just have to say that legally because you can't, you know, guarantee returns or anything, but it's actually a really great way to just remind yourself, well, yes, the markets have done extremely well in the past 12 months, but that's not going to happen. You can't guarantee that's going to happen again. And yeah. there needs to be a correction somewhere because, like you said, Google, the second biggest company in the whole wide world to do 57% in the last year. Mm. How can something already so big continue that same growth moving yeah. forward? You just, uh, yeah. And, yeah, and this is where markets work, work at the extremes. Mm. Yeah, the, there's the greed part and people overpay, and then there's the fear part, you know, when the, um, when the, yeah, shit hits the fan, <laughs> shit hits the fan, and it it's goes the other way, and people sell it down too far. They, yeah. you know, it, so on average, markets will go up by around 9, 10, 11% on average over decades. Yeah. But it's not a, just a straight line like that. It is up, it's down. We, you know, Markets are driven by people, driven by people's emotions. Mm -hmm. And when the news is bad, people will want to sell because they're scared. How far down will it go? Yeah. When the news is good, like we're seeing at the moment, then you get that flywheel of momentum where people are saying, well, we just did 30, you know, Google just did nearly 60%. Yeah. We better buy some of that. Yeah, I want to get on the bandwagon. I'm in. And that's where people start to overpay with the too much optimism and greed. Yeah, and it's probably a good point as well with that CAPE ratio and why it is so awesome to look at. You can select, you know, the individual countries' indexes and the, so the PE over, it's got nearly 100 years of history on mm. there, doesn't it? Yep, back tested. So, yeah, so looking at if you're country's average PE might be 15 times, so 15 times price is what you're paying for the current year's earnings. Some of it now is at about 37 times and you can see historically when it has gone up to those levels that it has fallen down afterwards yeah. to realign itself because people have gotten greedy. Yeah. greedy. <laughs> and that's probably it. We will talk about how we're treating new clients, people with, with money to invest, but I think that's a, an excellent you know, we know, we know there'll be a correction after such a big strong run up, there'll be a correction. But I went to a training day in Melbourne um, a week and a half ago. And the people, I won't mention the fund manager's name, but in August last year, they decided that, well, the market, there's just so many things wrong with the world um, between wars and inflation. And, you know, the run has already happened. So August last year, they went defensive and they hedged. 100% of their portfolio. So they've, from August through to now, where it's been an amazing run, particularly after Christmas, the markets have really shot up, um, and they've essentially negated any performance. Yeah. So it just shows. It doesn't matter if you're in 
If what floor in 101 Collins Street or Pitt Street in Sydney you're in, in the short term, no one has any idea. No. And you know these guys, I went and had, you know, while they were chatting and they were bagging out, um, uh, they were bagging out passive investing in inde index managers, the ones that just buy the S and P 500. Yeah. They don't research what's in there. They just like Vanguard, like BlackRock, like iShares. Yeah. Um, these guys are active managers. So whilst they were still, you know, they are active managers, uh, but they've got it wrong because they've tried to get the market. And, and Hamish Douglas got that wrong in, in 2020 with COVID. He was too conservative and he didn't see this rebound yeah. and he was out of the market. And obviously we know the Magellan story that hurt Magellan, mm -hmm. um, their funds and their performance, and it definitely hurt the business itself substantially. Yeah. Um, yeah, so interesting point. Definitely, and even with the Farrellys, we're talking about you know U.S. equities at the moment forecasted for the next ten years that you know two percent. It can stay in that overvalued state for years to come. You know, Tim Farrelly doesn't know when it's going to correct or any of that. So it's worthwhile noting that yes, while things are overvalued at the moment, it might continue to be so for years yeah. to come. We just don't know. Yeah, and that research that Amy's referring to is from Tim as well to so, say, well, it can be. It can be overvalued, yeah. and it can be overvalued for an extended period of time. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a quote from uh, Berkshire Hathaway, you know, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, that that markets can stay irrational for longer than you can stay solvent. And that's more talking about on the downside that things can look bad for a, um, an extended period of time. Yeah. And if you've got if you've got debt, margin loans, and gearing, well, that's um, that they they're the things that break people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So let's have a look at, I suppose, some case studies or a case study that we have had, you know, clients that have just sold their farm. They're really pleased with what they got. Valuations are high, like the markets are at the moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of a sudden we've got two, three, four, five mil, whatever it is, uh, to invest. What have we been doing? It's, it's very difficult to say, you are a balanced investor. 60% of your money needs to go into the markets bang right now <laughs> right now get it all in there and then you know without any big surprise from us the market corrects by 20 yeah. percent and and that can easily happen and that really affects the you know journey that investor will have for the rest of their life mm. it, starting with that massive base and losing you know 40 percent potentially straight away is, has a massive effect on the long term and just on the mental you know view of markets in general yeah so whilst we're not trying to time it, we're trying to be, I suppose, cautious and we're, I suppose we're implementing a, a type of a dollar cost averaging. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to explain what we're physically doing there? Yeah, for yeah. probably since COVID, I'd say, we've mm -hmm. been using progressive investing. So if somebody does come to us with a large amount of money or really any amount of money, it's not just those selling farming land or big assets but we are progressively investing and have been for a few years. So we might do a quarter or a third at a time into still a stock selection that's made. Um, but right now, because we do know that the US equities in particular are overvalued, even though they might continue to be for a long time, we have halted investing new funds into that area. Um, but otherwise Australian equities are still fine. And yeah. there's right. always gonna be those you know, cherry pick selections that you can make in the overvalued sector as a whole, but individual companies can still be, yeah. you know. And so while we're still investing into some sectors, we're doing a certain percentage. We're yes. leaving cash in the bank. Yeah. Uh, and just to clarify what we did do during COVID was uh, when the share market crashed, we were buying. Yeah. yeah we, we, weren't dollar, we weren't dollar cost average, we weren't progressively investing, we were just going in. Yeah. Um, and if clients had money to invest, that, that was going in. Because yeah. that, that was a you know, nearly 40% you know, reduction from top to bottom. Mm. Um, so that was a, and, and that's what people need to ready themselves for, particularly after a big run. There will be a correction at some stage. Yeah. There's just no one that can tell you when that's going to happen. Yeah, and we've you know, told clients that if we've already invested you know, 15, 30, 50% of their portfolio, if a correction does occur, we're going all in. Yep. And, and the downside of doing this is that markets just keep on marching up, up and up. And as you said, keep getting more, you know, keep getting more expensive. But mm -hmm. in doing that, you're also missing out. Yes. But the further it goes up, potentially the further it will have to come, to come down. Yeah. And that's where I see, yeah, fund managers like the one I saw the other, other week is uh, had a, you know, they've 
when I was sitting there and looking at the, the long sec research, mm-hmm. their, their funds have underperformed terribly. Yeah. Um, and probably what's happened of late, they've yeah, missed out on some huge upside. Yeah. And that is always the risk, and I guess that's the risk even with us saying if the market does drop, you know, 40%, we're going all in, but it could drop 50%, 60%, and we've, you know, potentially gone in too early, but with the long-term view, that is still much better than missing out on that crash altogether or investing at yeah. the peak now. Yeah, so that's why we, we have, you know, we pay uh, Tim Verily for his, for his knowledge and his thoughts because his job is solely to think about asset allocation and valuations. Yeah. Yeah. and that 10 year forecast which is extremely valuable yeah absolutely and we're just lucky that right now you know interest rates are still really high so us holding in cash is not it's not as bad as it was two years ago mm. when you had a one or two percent oh, rate it's, abs- yeah and there was people just demanding you know regardless of valuations that they you know they want to be in the market yeah and i had a chap do that just prior to the COVID crash um you know but i made him stay where he was yeah yeah and- I guess that's one of the most valuable things about having a financial advisor. It's someone to be a steady hand and re-show you all the information that kind of does come across our desks to make sure that you're not, you know, getting sucked into that greediness and seeing that run up and just wanting to go all in. Yeah. We had a young chap come in, 18 year old, and he has money to invest and he's been waiting, you know, his his whole life, I guess, because he's waited till 18. But us sitting there telling him just be patient. <laughs> It is really hard for excited yeah. investors to do. Yeah, and I suppose in, in that scenario, he had, you know, he's probably got five or six grand to invest. We said, look, here's, here's some direction, but you might do a thousand dollars now because yeah. you want to do something. You've been waiting all this time, yeah. and he's a keen investor, only eighteen, um, but do a grand now, yeah. and then see what happens. Wait six months. Well, there's a bit of correction. Buy again. Yeah. So take your time, but that's you know teaching people patience. Of I've always said. That is the hardest thing to do. Definitely. Fantastic. All right, I think that's probably enough for this one. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Uh, please remember that if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, there is 600 plus videos there. Uh, we're also keen to know any topics you'd like us to cover. Mm-hmm. Um, Amy and I are both active on Instagram and TikTok uh, under the Wealth Diaries, and I'm Rob Gowdy, Financial Advisor. Um, so any topics that you'd like co- covered, any questions you've got, we love to answer those. It's, yeah. uh, it's what we do on a day-to-day basis when we're sitting around the interview room here and uh, chatting with people, helping, answering questions. Yeah, definitely give us an ask. Cool. Thanks, Amy. All right, thanks, everybody. Cheers. Till next time.